Hey guys, this is Mike from Team 4411S, and uh, today we're going to be continuing on with our fourth episode of our Pros tutorial series. So if you'll remember, um, in our last episode we went over a uh, basic translate function that goes forwards and backwards, and then we upgraded it so that it can go in either direction, and so that it uses the gyroscope to help um, correct itself to make sure it drives perfectly straight. So um, all we're going to be doing today is basically making a rotate function that complements this so that you'll be able to do pretty basic autonomous routines that can go forward and rotate with, I mean, pretty good accuracy. Um, I mean, uh, disclaimer, I'm not going to pretend that these are the most advanced functions out there and that they'll be completely accurate, but they're definitely better than some of the basic functions that uh, people have been using to date. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So you know that we have to make our function header, so rotate. And it's going to take two parameters, so the degrees that you're rotating and the voltage that you're going to be rotating at. So now that we have this function header, let's go ahead and paste it in here so that we can use it. Okay, so our rotate function is going to be very similar to our translate function, except, uh, well, it's not going to go forward or backward, it'll just turn. So we want to define a few basic things. Um, we do want to make this, I'm not going to make this as in-depth as the translate one, mostly because it works pretty similarly, so I'm just going to run through what we have to do. So you have to define our direction, which if you remember, um, is based on the units provided, and it's either going to be a 1 or a negative 1, so it'll tell you whether or not you're turning left or right, basically. So the second thing we're going to be doing is resetting the gyroscope. Um, this doesn't use the integrated motor encoders, it just uses the gyroscope. You can make a turn function based off of your motor encoders, but you need to know the actual uh, radius of your wheelbase, which is something that most teams might not figure out super accurately, so we're going to be using the gyroscope just to make sure that we uh, can appeal to the most teams possible. So then we're going to turn until units are reached, then we're going to have our brief break, and then we're going to reset drive to zero. Okay, so first thing we want to do is define our direction. So if you remember in our uh, translate function, we defined it based on our units. Basically, if you want to go um, a positive number, or if you want to go forward, you enter a positive number for units. And if you want to go backwards, you enter a negative number. So similarly, if you want to go forwards or turn left, um, you're going to put a positive number in the degrees, just like a unit circle. Um, and if you want to turn right, then you put in a negative number. So let's do absolute value of degrees over degrees. This, I mean, obviously works the same way that um, it does for the units. So now we just reset the gyroscope. Pretty simple. Um, okay, so now we are turning until the units are reached. So this is going to be pretty similar to our um, drive one except instead of using our average encoder value, we're going to be using our um, gyroscope value. So while gyro.getValue is less than our uh, degrees. Now we're going to be doing degrees times 10 because if you remember, uh, the gyroscope actually returns tenths of a degree. So for example, if you're at a 90 degree angle, your, your gyroscope is going to say 900. So you need to uh, scale your degrees by 10 to also factor that in. Um, now, if you remember, we we're also using the absolute value. Take note that I'm using the fabs function because gyro.getValue returns a float. Sorry, a um, double. And degrees times 10, we're also going to need to do absolute value of. Okay. So while you're there, uh, all you really want to do is get to set your drive to a certain number. So what are we going to do instead of 0, 0? Well, let's think about it. So Remember that if direction is positive, then you're going to be turning left. And if you're going to be turning left, then the left side of your drive is going to be going at a negative value, and your right side of your drive is going to be going at a positive value. So keeping in mind that left is negative, we're going to want to do, we're going to want it to turn at a negative voltage times direction, and then the right side will be a positive voltage times direction. And this works obviously if you're turning the other way, because um, if you're turning uh, to the right, then direction will be negative, so it will be negative voltage times sorry negative voltage times negative one, which will be a positive number, and then positive voltage times negative one, which will be a negative number, which will consequently turn right. 
Now, don't forget to delay by 10 milliseconds. And then our brief break, also pretty similar, um, except instead of setting it to um, negative 10 and then negative 10, the left side would actually be positive 10 times the direction because uh, you want to set it to the um, opposite of what it was doing before. So since this would normally be a negative number, you would want to make this a positive. And same for this. If this since this is normally a positive number, you want to make this a negative. And then all you really have to do is just set your drive back to zero, and boom, you have a really basic turn function. Except that's not all we're going to do. So um, as you may know, turning has a little bit more drift than just driving forwards and backwards, and it also has a more of a tendency to overshoot. So for example, um, hopefully I'll put some images on the screen here, but let's say you're turning left 90 degrees. Um, if you, if what we're doing here is we're turning at that full speed until we hit that target 90 degrees and then we break. So uh, depending on the feel, the tiles, uh, how much friction there is, I mean, a lot of factors, you could overshoot your turn. Um, so you could go farther than that, that 90 degrees, which would obviously offset your entire autonomous routine, which would be pretty bad. So, um, I mean, it would be much worse than overshooting your driving backwards and forwards a tiny bit. So um, we want to do a little bit more to help account for that. So what we're actually going to do is get rid of this break, and we're going to manually correct all of our overshoot. So, um, for example, you can make an if statement that says, um, so once you do this, you would probably want to wait, um, I don't know, maybe 100 milliseconds for it to do any of its overshoot and stop moving. Um, so that, sorry, one sec. Okay, so once it's finished moving to that point, you probably want to give it about 100 milliseconds to lose its momentum um, so that you can correct when it's done moving. Um, I'm going to assume this is 100 milliseconds. This may be different depending on your robot. So now we're going to check if it did overshoot. So the way you check is basically if the value of the gyroscope is greater than uh, your degrees times 10. Because if it's greater, that means you've turned farther than you were supposed to. So um, if this is the case, then all you really want to do is do the same thing, but a lot slower so that you'll be more accurate. So while it is greater, you want to turn the other way. So your left side will actually be positive and your right side will be negative. Except uh, you'd probably want to turn at maybe like half speed so that you can be as accurate as possible. So let's multiply everything by 0 0.5 so that it will go at half speed. Um, and so this will correct if you overshot. Now there is one more optimization you can do, um, and that's that you don't actually have to turn the full, for, I mean in this example for like let's say we're doing 90 degrees, um, you don't have to turn the full 90 degrees before you uh, let it coast on its own momentum. Maybe you probably maybe want to do like 85 degrees because Let's say you make it go to 90 all the way. Well, it's always going to overshoot because it's always still going to have momentum. But if you stop at 85, maybe it'll uh, overshoot a little bit less. Because since, let's say it always overshoots 10 degrees, I mean, arbitrary number. But um, so if you stop at 85, that it'll only go 95 and you'll only have to correct for an extra 5 degrees. So it's, it takes less time to correct. So um, let's say we want to make it go... Uh, instead of 90 degrees to 85. So all we have to do is subtract 50. So basically what this is saying is uh, while the, the angle the, the gyroscope detects is um, the target angle minus five degrees. Hopefully that's that makes sense. Um, I'll try and give another example. Let's say you want to turn 45 degrees. So it's while the value of the gyroscope is less than 450 minus 50. So it's while it's less than 400, which is 40 degrees. Um, but that also does leave you the possibility of undershooting your turn because maybe you have a lot of friction, in which case your drive probably needs some work or there's a lot of anti-static spray like at Worlds. But um, in that case, you might actually undershoot and you may not go the full 90 degrees. Maybe you could only go 89. So you also want to check if you undershot your turn. So basically, if this condition is still true, um, if you're less than your target angle, uh, you'd want to do something else. So it's basically the opposite of this, and instead of turning backwards to correct your overshoot, you'd want to uh, 
keep turning the way that you were turning originally. So uh, you'd actually set this the left side back to a negative value. Um, and since you are going at like half speed, uh, you probably don't need the brief break at the end because you're already going so slow, you're not going to have much momentum. So you can really just set the drive back to zero after this. Okay, um, so there is one more optimization that you can do to this, and that's simply um, putting these set drive stuff, all of that, right before this while loop. And the reason that you can do this is because when you set the drive, remember what it does is it sets the voltage of these motors based on what you put in for left and what you put in for right. So it's never actually changing what you set those motors to. And remember from earlier uh, in this series, I mentioned that uh, the value that you set the motors to won't change until the next time you say set drive. So if you put set drive inside of this loop, uh, basically you're setting it every 10 milliseconds because remember you're delaying but it's not changing so you don't really need to um, do it in the loop you can set it right before the loop and then it just is a little bit more efficient so you can do this for all of the loops um, the reason that this doesn't work for what we're doing with the uh, translate function is because uh, that value that you're setting the motors to can change and what i mean by that is um, if it were just this voltage times direction, then you could do the trick and put it outside of the while loop. But since your gyro value does change and you want to correct based off of that, then you do want to be constantly checking it to make sure you're getting the right value. Um, whereas here, you know it's not going to change because you're not factoring that in. So you can put it outside of the while loop. And then the while loop is basically just delaying and keeping the motors at that value um, until you reach whatever angle you're looking for. Okay, so just a quick recap. Um, this is our rotate function. So uh, we define a direction so that you can go left or right. Remember that um, positive degrees is going left and negative degrees is going right. Um, I hope that in V5 that isn't switched like I mentioned earlier. If it is, all you have to do um, is just change these negatives and stuff. So that's not that big a deal. Um, so by default, I would assume that because I remember, I think that's what I remember doing, that left is positive, right is negative. But again, I could be wrong. So we're figuring out our direction. We're resetting our gyroscope uh, back to zero, so that I mean it makes calculations easier. Of course, this, uh, like I mentioned in the uh, translate function, um, you could just add the target value, but just to keep things simple, uh, we're just resetting it back to zero. So you're turning until your units are reached, and then I'm going to add a comment here, uh, letting the robot lose its momentum, and then after this we're correcting any overshoot or undershoot. Okay, so uh, back to this. So we're turning until the units are reached, or rather units uh, minus 5 degrees are reached. So remember, if we're turning 9 degrees, then we're going to be checking until it reaches 850. So 90 times 10, which would be 900, minus 50, which is, well, 850. OK, so um, basically, I mean, you're setting your drive already in here, and then you're just waiting until it reaches that number. Then here, we're just letting it coast and losing its momentum so it can stop. And then we're correcting any overshoot. Um, so. If you did overshoot it, then you're turning the other way, which you can tell because this voltage is normally positive and now this one's negative, whereas normally this one would be negative and this one would be positive. And then you're also checking if you are undershooting, um, in which case you keep turning the same direction as before. And remember, these are at half speed. You can adjust this to maybe like three tenths of your speed, um, but that's up to you. And then at the end, you're just resetting your drive back to zero. So this is a pretty basic rotate function. Obviously, if you know stuff like P loops, uh, PID, you can, I mean, make this a lot more complicated and a lot more, uh, I wouldn't say accurate, because this is pretty accurate enough, but you can make it theoretically more accurate. So now, I mean, now that we have these functions available with your um, translate and your rotate function, you can make pretty basic autonomous functions where you, you know, drive forward, rotate and then like I don't know set your intake to a certain number 
so that you can like you know intake cubes and stuff. Um, I believe it's or what was the? Do we not have a set intake function? Um, I thought we did, but we'll have to come back to that in a second. Um, so yeah, I mean the next stuff that we're going to be doing is some stuff to like for example um, move the angler to a certain number or move the lift to a certain number so that you can angle your stack and maybe put a cube in a tower um, but that will be in the next tutorial because they're very similar and uh, this was obviously just a tutorial on rotating functions um, I guarantee you this will work very well this was very similar to the actual stuff all of the skyline robots used um, not far off from it but um, yeah, I guarantee this will serve you pretty well and uh, hope you guys enjoy. See you guys.